Welcome back. Uh, it's continuing uh, restoration work on this Kit Fox Mark IV. Um, and uh, I've just been using the Stewart's, uh, I'm covering these wings, and I'm using the Stewart's uh, glue system or covering system. And this is the glue I'm using here this Eco Bond fabric cement E610. And uh, I've used uh, various fabric covering systems in the past, and I've got to say, this is very good. First of all, it's it's water based, so it's very good on the, the nose. It's not stinky and toxins and you know acetones and MEK and you know solvents all over the place. So it's water based. It's very easy to use. It's um it's easy to clean. Just wash your brushes in in water. It's, uh, nice and safe. You barely need to use gloves, although the glue does get it gets sticky. It has a latex latex type rubbery appearance. So the process is basically. You put the glue down on the base material, for the base metal first, or the wood, or whatever the structure is, the base structure, and then you let you put that on fairly with a just with a brush. You put that on um, just nice and even, lead around where you want it to glue. You know, you must let that set. So you let it set, but you don't let it set for weeks. Just a you know set for a few hours. I actually accelerate it with a, a hairdryer, but it must be touch dry, but quite rubbery. And then you just simply cut the fabric out. Uh, previously, I guess you'd have it already to go, and you lay it on top of that dry glue, and you just press it in. I normally set the iron on a low temperature and, and use the iron to press it in. You're not actually looking to melt the glue or anything. You're just sort of forcing it into the to, to the glue underneath, which, as I said, is quite tacky and rubbery, but not wet. And then once you've got it all glued down on all your ribs and your reinforcement areas, you know you just you just take this glue here into a into a into a dish into a little little pot and you just paint it on with a brush but the, it's really important that you wipe it off straight away that's why all the my uh, floor looks like a teenager's bedroom so you're wiping off the uh, using uh, using a cloth or a paper towel you're wiping off the glue as soon as you put it on and it soaks through the, the fabric and, and binds with the glue below and you end up with a very neat um, finish now it looks a little bit sort of messy and but that uh, I can assure you that once this fabric is primed and filled using the Eco primer and eco fills and all those. So you continue using Stuart's system, they won't show because it's still actually a fabric weave there that's not glossy. And it's important to wipe the glue off so that you don't have that sheen and gloss because it can ball up on you once you iron it. And basically, once that's dry, then you would just press the iron through just to give it one last sort of push in and activation. And um, the two latex surfaces then really bond. And you put your tapes on the same thing. Same here with the rudder. So all, all, um, all in the Stuart's um, glues. Now I'm not using, um, I've got my tapes on, the rudder's actually finished, all the tapes are on, all using Stuart's. Now, um, so here's my, you know, I just got water here, right? I mean, it does get very rubbery, uh, but that's all cool. Now I'm just using the cheap aircraft spruce Dacron. So, you know, and the tapes, not, they're all no name tapes, all no brand tapes, no problem at all. Just buy a set of blades to cut it and some picking shears and you're on your way. Um, now, I did a Kit Fox a couple of years ago um, using the same system and, um, you know, look at the finish. You know, I mind you, I put a lot of filler on there, all the BK Prime, but you know, it came up really spectacular. I'm very pleased with it. And that's all using just the um, no brand Dacron. Still shrinks the same way. I can't tell the difference, just hasn't got the uh, certified labeling on it. So that's where we're at. Um, all good. Now the other trick is, this is a Kit Fox wing. I like to put as many, I've made a, like a sexy shape here, but that's just my bullshit. But everywhere you've got an opening, you want to exaggerate it with a piece of plywood, right? Um, I know it's in the plants, but everywhere where there was an opening or a protrusion, I put a, a little disc of plywood or some bit of plywood. And I actually left the plywood unsealed because the glue takes to it better that way. So it's all good. Uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. The weave's a little bit coarser for the same weight than the Dacron, than the uh, probably the, the certified stuff, but eh. So here's some parts that also need to be repaired. And this is the stuff that I used on my last Kit Fox, the black one I just showed you. And this stuff was brilliant. And I use this everywhere. I end up even using it on the fiberglass parts, the hard surfaces. It just was an excellent primer. Now I didn't use any of the silver stuff. I don't. My planes are mainly hanging, and I'm not going to be around for a million years. And the modern fabrics really don't rot that quickly, if at all. I've got planes that have been up there, model airplanes, half scale, three quarter scale. Sorry, um, through two thirds scale. They're about 20 years old in stits. 
they're still fine. So I just use um, this for not only the sealer, but also the primer and everything. And remember, I've got a black aeroplane over there, okay? So, you know, the chances are that it's gonna fall apart on me in the air due to UV is uh, very unlikely, so. But well, that's just my opinion, my philosophy, so you do what you want. But uh, yeah, I pretty much use the glue and that for the rest, for the priming, the sealing, and the finishing on both the fabric and the hard surfaces. Anyway, I'll keep working on this, this project, uh, and then we'll stick the engine on it and hopefully have it sort of looking pretty close by the, the end of this year. Also, um, another good trick was, you see I've got this regular, I've got this old iron. I keep it nice and clean just by running some scotch bright across it, all the so-called surface or Teflon is all gone. No big deal for this application, but you just want to try and keep that clean. But more to the point, you see I've marked there, in Fahrenheit, keeping with the American system. Uh, two, I won't focus on that. There we go. 250, 350, and I've made my own marks. I've got three stages there, right? Um, and uh, I'll talk about that more in a minute. But yeah, the first stage basically is just to do a pre shrink um, so you can prep everything up for your tapes and everything, and then you do a final shrink later. Obviously, you don't want to be putting your tapes on and everything before it's at least been semi shrunk, otherwise, it tapes will all wander around. And what I use to calibrate the thing, this battery's flat in this thing, it's not going, but um, I use this, it's just a cheap, um, you can get them off eBay and Amazon, they're worth, they're worth nothing. And uh, yeah, use this to set your iron temperature and then make your own marks, so, you know, get it, just keep tweaking it till you get your, your various stages. Um, and that's a good way to set your iron up. The other the other thing too is, um, you gotta understand that when, you, when you're working on your wing, if you're working on, like, this has got an aluminium spar underneath it here where my finger is, and these wooden areas, you've got to start to imagine that when you're putting the iron on these surfaces, particularly as these model aeroplane irons, that's why I use the big iron, because it holds its heat. It doesn't it doesn't drop its heat so quickly when you touch it on a surface. Um, if you understand the way, you know, heat works, it goes hot to cold, and the cold just absorbs the heat really quickly. So the point I'm making is when you're working on a, on a surface like a wing spar or something that's aluminium or I think something that's hard, just imagine what its potential to pull heat out of the iron is because if the iron's set low, you know, as soon as you put put it to the fabric on with it with a surf with a structure beneath it, it's just not going to get hot. It's going to do nothing, right? As opposed to when you put it on an open surface, while well, there's nothing behind it, so the, the heat's going to be absorbed into the fabric very quickly. It's going to shrink like crazy. So um, what I'm saying is, when you when you're trying to tack your fabric down or just press it in with the iron, you've got to make sure that um that you account for the fact that the, the structure underneath is going to absorb a lot of heat. So for instance, this has got an aluminium spar uh, beneath this um, surface here, where the tip of the iron is. And I actually turn the iron up flat out in that instance, because I know that as soon as I put the iron on that surface, the aluminium spar is going to just draw the heat right out. And in fact, you can put your hand on it straight after you've ironed it, it's still cold. So you have to take that into consideration. Now obviously you wouldn't do that on the open section, because it'll just, just shrink like mad. So yeah, you use a little bit of uh, judgment when you're when you're putting the iron onto a surface that's um, that's got a material underneath it, and if that material is going to absorb the heat or not, you might want to adjust your iron. So yeah, all the way around the edges and the hard surface, I pretty much had the iron set flat out, so I could really press that fabric into the dry um, glue that was uh, beneath it, and you sort of sort of really push it into that 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 glue. And then of course, as I said earlier, you then put the brush the you then brush the uh, the the, um, the glue over the top of the, the unsealed fabric and it goes through and it, it keys into the glue that you'd put down previously. And that's how the system works. But as I said, you must wipe the glue off straight away so that you've only got the weave, you know, just a blue colored weave left, which is what, what you've got here. So if you look closely there, um, you know, there's no, there's no glossiness. It's been wiped away. If you get any glossiness there, um, that's fine. But when you go to work it or on, it's gonna ball up like a latex rubber, which is sh which is gonna look shit under your paint. So the key is to wipe it away, so the blue still remains, and but you've got nothing really showing on the, on the outside. But anyway, that's it.
All right, so we're working on the top side now. You can see I've got the fabric on the underneath side, uh, just uh, uh, glued in place and just had the first stage of shrinking done. I haven't put any of the caps on yet. I'm just put the, I just put the, the lower uh, skin on and now I'm working on the top and then collectively I'll put all my tapes on. But what I'm demonstrating here is, um, is a Kit Fox Mark IV wing, which is pretty much the same wing right through. It's got less under camber than the early models like my black one here. But even so, same process. So what I'm doing with the Stewart's um, glue here is, you, as I said earlier, you put it down and you let it set. Now I actually used a hairdryer or heat gun. So I've got a, a glue, I've glued an area here in the tank. I always worry about the tank. On my other Kit Fox I had um, ribs to elevate the fabric off the tank. In this instance I haven't because this tank actually turns out almost to be flush with the ribs. So I'm just going to leave it as it is intended. But I know I've put a, a, a glue band here which is already tacked off. So when I put the fabric on and put the glue through it'll stick to it. But I just know it's going to look a little bit mm, ugly around this area here. It's not going to be defined like uh, for instance if I used a nice um, you know patch like that, you know wooden plywood patch. So we're tip on my other kid fox I actually had a wooden disc there to keep everything off. But again this is flush so I haven't got that option. So I only want the fabric to stick in this area here. I don't want it to stick to the tank because I just know it's gonna look ugly. So anyway, we'll see how that pans out. But um that's it, so everything's sort of ready to go. Um so all the, the glue is dry, so I'll put the fabric on now and I'll press it in with the iron set light and um that'll tack it in position, flip it over, glue underneath and then start by fully gluing the underneath and then um, brush the paint, brush the glue through, wipe it off, uh, let it set and then put a, a first stage of shrink on the fabric at about 250 Fahrenheit. Well, we'll see how that goes.
Well, I'll just finish the session here on this wing. That's enough for today. So uh, what I've done here is I've got the top skin. Same on this end here. That's going to get glued and wrapped underneath. And of course, very important, the trailing edge likewise get wrapped right underneath. I'll probably use all of that. Uh, put that right underneath. I didn't make it much longer than that because there's plenty of adhesion plus there's going to be a cap over it and I want to make sure when the four inch cap, which is going to have two inches each side, wraps around the tape, it covers that edge so can't afford that to be too long. Once the, once the fabric's secured fully, um, then the final shrink can happen um, and then the tapes can go on last and no more shrinking after the tapes go on, just iron the tapes down at the end, I guess. No, I'll have a think about that. What's well, that? That's it for now.